We're just one week in, and 2012 is already looking like a strong year for marriage, with encouraging action in Washington, Colorado, and Maryland. The governor of Michigan revokes health care coverage for domestic partners, leaving families with no access to medical care, and a binational couple in San Francisco gets a two-year reprieve, but their eventual fate may rest with whoever occupies the White House two years from now. I'm Matt Baum with the American Foundation for Equal Rights, and welcome to Marriage News Watch for January 9th, 2012. Remember the Republican debate when a soldier named Stephen Hill asked Rick Santorum about Don't Ask, Don't Tell? Well, this week I spoke to Stephen Hill and his husband, Josh Snyder, about their experience coming out in front of the world, what they thought of Rick's response, how their relationship's been affected by Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and we also got a little gun show. Here's a few highlights from our conversation. Stay tuned for the full interview coming out later this week. Immediately I thought, am I in trouble? Did I do something wrong? Because, you know, I just got booed on national TV. I'm a, I'm a serviceman. I'm a soldier. Um, so that was the next thought. And then, of course, you know, Rick Santorum's answer was the next string of emotions. And then after all that was done, I thought, oh, my God, I just came out to six billion people. I can tell you after dealing with it for a year and being a, a, an Army spouse, it's not easy. We've been on Skype before and the mortar's gone off and he's had to, he's had to disconnect and, you know, we lost contact for a few hours. And it's, it's really kind of weird to think, you know, you've got your, your phone in one hand and I've got Skype sitting up on the, on, the, on the computer and I'm just hoping Skype rings versus, you know, the phone because God only knows. I mean, I'm the first to be contacted because we, we arranged it, you know, from, a, uh, from the standpoint of the documentation that you submit with the Army. But technically as a spouse, I wouldn't really even be recognized. It was basically kind of all set up by us. I've had to run through my house and hide pictures in my own house, you know, when, when soldiers and friends would come over. And I've had to ask people to leave my house. You know, I've had to make my roommates lie. I've had to do a lot of stuff. And, you know, the, the resentment of that kind of stuff and then the resentment of knowing that for 20 years I fought for my country and I fought for everybody's rights except my own. I mean, that's basically what, it's, what it is. And I have to lie to do that, you know, and it just isn't right. Let's look at some headlines from around the state. This week, the governor of Washington, Christine Gregoire, will introduce a bill to legalize marriage. LGBTs have a good ally in Gregoire. She introduced a 2009 bill that legalized civil unions. Getting from civil unions to marriage is going to be an uphill climb since the bill will have to pass through a legislature that's proven skeptical towards marriage in the past. But with the recent survey showing that Washingtonians support marriage 54 to 35 percent, momentum is clearly on our side. The Washington legislative session starts this week and ends on March 8th. Maryland's legislative session is also slated to start this week, and lawmakers are expected to take up a revamped marriage bill. Although similar legislation has failed by a narrow margin in the past, this year the bill has a much larger coalition. Organizers on our side are duplicating much of the tactics that worked in New York last year, such as a strong commitment of support from the governor and broad exemptions for religious organizations that want to discriminate against LGBT couples. The Maryland Assembly is scheduled to start this week and adjourn in April. And Colorado's legislature starts its session this week with a group of Republicans playing catch-up with Democrats to support a civil unions bill. Colorado's constitution prohibits marriage, but a survey from September shows that 76 percent of Coloradans favor some form of relationship recognition. Domestic partnerships suffered a setback in Michigan this week with anti-gay Governor Rick Snyder signing a bill that would force most government employers to deny health care benefits to domestic partners. The law is particularly cruel to LGBT partners because domestic partners are singled out for denial of benefits while other family members can continue to receive them. The American Civil Liberties Union has filed a lawsuit on behalf of teachers and local employees. Among the named plaintiffs are domestic partners who desperately need their health coverage to continue. Those include Barbara Ramber, who could suffer blindness if she doesn't get medical care for her glaucoma, and Gerardo Asheri, whose high blood pressure and cholesterol pose an immediate health risk. There was a reprieve this week for Bradford Wells and Anthony John Mack, a San Francisco couple that was threatened with deportation. Despite being the primary caregiver for his ailing husband, the Immigration Service had threatened Mack with exile to his native Australia. This week, uh, Senator Nancy Pelosi called the couple to inform them that deportation proceedings were being deferred for another two years. That's good news for now, but it wouldn't help the thousands of binational LGBT couples currently facing deportation. Of the current Republican frontrunners for president, all would be likely to undo the advances for LGBTs that have been made under the Obama administration. 
Those are the headlines. I'm Matt Baum at the American Foundation for Equal Rights. Visit AFER.org for more on the federal fight to win full marriage equality. And stay tuned for a big announcement this week about the national rollout of eight Dustin Lance Black's new play about the Prop 8 trial. You can also visit MarriageNewsWatch.com to get breaking news and alerts. And remember to hit like to spread the word about marriage equality to your family and friends. We'll see you next week.